I'm Jane Shadel Spillman, curator of American Glass at this museum and also of this exhibit, Tiffany Treasures, Fevril Glass from Special Collections. Louis Comfort Tiffany is perhaps best known for the stained glass windows and electric lamps with stained glass shades, which his company designed and produced early in the 20th century. However, that's only a portion of his creativity. In terms of glass, he was an innovator whose creations were the inspiration for many other glass manufacturers. This exhibit is about Tiffany's blown glass vases, made from 1893 until 1929. Tiffany was the son of Charles Tiffany, founder of the famous New York luxury goods store, which is still on Fifth Avenue. He was born in 1848 and originally wanted to be a painter, but by the 1870s he had become a decorator and designed his first stained glass window in 1879 for his own apartment. During the 1880s he became very active in this field, and during the next 50 years, his company made hundreds of windows for both churches and private homes. At first, he bought the flat glass from several different places and used it to create his own window designs. Tiffany built his own glass factory at Corona on Long Island in 1893. It was originally called the Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company, but was changed to Tiffany Furnaces for the blown glass and Tiffany Studios for the stained glass in 1902. After that, he had more control over the glass. Tiffany knew nothing about glass formulas or the skills of glass blowing, so he hired Arthur Nash, an Englishman who had been a supervisor at an English glass house, to run his factory. Nash was a trained glassmaker, and he developed the formulas for the various kinds of Tiffany glass. He kept them in several notebooks. The Nash notebooks are all in the collection of the Raquel Library of the Corning Museum of Glass. He named the glass Favrile from an old English word, fabrile, which means handmade. The objects were asymmetrical, based on the principles of Art Nouveau, and somewhat influenced by the work of the French glass designer, Emile Gallet. The blown glass pieces in this exhibition are a microcosm of the various types which the Tiffany Company made, and no design went to market without his personal approval. Both the shapes and the colors of Tiffany's vessels were unusual at that time, when elaborately cut glassware in symmetrical forms was favored by the wealthy. Tiffany's glasses displayed the skills of blowers and color mixers, although some of these objects were also cut or engraved. Trademarked in 1894, Favrile glass quickly became fashionable and inspired many other designers. Archaeology was certainly one of the most important influences on Tiffany's blown glass, but flowers and the world of nature were also very strong factors. Many of the early pieces were in shapes related to flowers or had appliqued flowers. Other pieces had applied floral and leaf decoration. Tiffany was the first American glassmaker to utilize these shapes. Because of that, he greatly influenced other American glasshouses like Steuben in Corning and Durand in New Jersey. Tiffany started making his electric lamps with stained glass shades around 1900. But before that, he experimented with making blown glass kerosene lamps, like this one. This lamp was a gift from Mickey and Jay Doros, longtime friends of the museum. It's a stunning example of Tiffany's work, and also the work of our conservator, Stephen Koob. The lamp was badly broken several years ago during home renovation. It's been carefully repaired so that it's like new. It took Stephen three months to do this work. Be sure to see the rest of our Tiffany pieces and the work of his competitors in the gallery and also in the Carter Gallery, which is across the parking lot by the studio. <laughs>